Hello everybody and welcome to part 9 of making the grab pack 2.0 from Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 in Unity 3D. If you haven't watched the other episodes, I suggest you go back and watch them. Or you can go into the description of or you can go into the description of this video and there's a Google Drive link which you can download the project and come back here to follow along. The installation instructions are also in the Google Drive in the last video's description. And as always, any new assets in this video are in this description. Anyway, I've made lots of changes since the last video which has been available on my Discord for the past two weeks, but I haven't shown any of it on YouTube. There are also some small things that those over on the Discord haven't had access to either. In this video, I'm going to showcase some of these new additions including death screens and respawning plus working checkpoints. Then I'll show you guys how you can add your own custom death messages and set up your own checkpoints using the system I have made. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you think I should keep working on this project. I also just wanted to thank you guys for all the support since we are now at 2000 subscribers. And one last thing before we jump into the video, I just wanted to let you know about the upcoming game I'm making called Stumble and Fall. It would mean a lot to me if you went over to the Steam page, the link is in the description, and add it to your wishlist so it gets shown to more people. Now let's get on with the video. The first addition is this openable vent I modeled and animated myself, and I've added it into the project for you guys to use. It works just like the door from the previous episode, but uses different animations and sounds. Next, I added actual destruction physics to the race car using a combination of rigid bodies and particle systems. The next thing I did was fix the grapple bars so they actually can keep the player in the air instead of letting the player fall. I also added some simple retract animations to the hands. I redid the footstep sounds because for a lot of people they weren't working right, but even with this new system I still had a lot of people have issues with it, so I'll try another way of doing this in the next episode, but I don't know what the issue is since it seems to work fine for me. I also made changes to the post processing effects that I feel make the game look better visually for those of you who are using the post processing. And I added a simple camera sharpen effect I got from the asset store. You can try it out with the link in the description. But if you download the full project, I think it should already be installed in the game. Finally, I made a death scream system that allows you to add as many custom death messages as you want and the game will pick a random one to be displayed. And afterwards, the player can respawn at their last saved checkpoint. These checkpoints don't currently save when the player closes the game, but I'll implement that very soon in the next video. Anyways, I'm going to show you guys how you can add your own death messages and checkpoints into the project using the system I made. Death messages are very easy to add, all you have to do is open up the Huggy Wuggy AI, then open up Death Canvas, and you can make duplicates of Death Message 1. I'm going to make a duplicate and I'm going to call it Death Message 2. Now right here you want to type in whatever you want your death message to be. For the purposes of this tutorial I'm just going to write death message to example. Now you just want to click onto this object here and add your death message to the list. Now start your game and there's a chance of you getting that death message when you die. To add more checkpoints, it's also really easy. Checkpoints are shown as these yellow boxes in editing mode, but when the game is running, they are completely invisible. To add a new one, just duplicate this one and change the checkpoint number up by 1. Your first checkpoint should always be 0, and the next one is 1, then 2, and so on. Then go into the checkpoint manager and add the new point to the list. Now, when the player runs through one of these points, the game saves that point, and the next time you die, it'll spawn you back at the last checkpoint.
Thanks for watching, I hope this helped or you at least found this video interesting. Remember to leave a like and subscribe for more updates, check out StumbleInfo on Steam, and I'll see you guys in the next one.